individual that would even consider. And so there's the web address right there. It's cruxware.com. Stop just talking about aviation and do a little more aviating myself. Hey guys, in this video, we're going to hear from Mark Klupper and also some of his five best practices or tips for aircraft restoration. And towards the end, I want to ask him a little bit more about his new business venture. Okay, so without further ado, I want to have Mark introduce himself along with share a brief, I guess, summary of when he first started flying and what really drawed him into aircraft registration from the beginning. So if you would, go ahead and uh, it's all yours, Mark. Hey, thank you. Yeah, well, I'm Mark Klupper. Uh, I'm originally from California, but I live in northern Indiana. And uh, my dad was a pilot for United Airlines. And so I grew up around aviation uh, from really as small as I could ever imagine or remember being. I've been around uh, aviation. But in uh, 1974, well, I should say I'm 59 now, almost 60. Uh, okay. In 1974, I'd have been 13. And my dad bought a brand new uh, Citabria, a Blanca. Back then they were made by Blanca. Wow. And it was a 7K CAB. So that's 150 horse with the inverted fuel and oil system. And so at age 13, he started teaching me to fly in that. So I learned in a tail dragger um, and uh, on a fairly narrow runway in Elgin, Illinois. And it was in the winter time when we started, so the runways were, or the runway was uh, a little bit slippery at times. So it was really tremendous education, especially for a young person who, honestly, at those ages, if you have the opportunity, which just was an amazing opportunity, um, if you have the opportunity to learn, you can soak things up so quickly. Uh, it's very much different than being an adult trying to learn something uh, new. So I was just really fortunate to get that exposure and I related to the airplane extremely well. And then um, I did solo in a glider on my 14th birthday. Oh, so, wow. uh, which of course would have been a year or so later than that. So, and I got a lot of time in the Citabria uh, before I soloed it in uh, at age 16. A new aircraft back then. Mm -hmm. So uh, was aircraft restoration that that kind of, um, was that maybe inspired a little bit by kind of trying to bring some of these old birds back to life by seeing, you know, having the experience with the new aircraft? Or? It probably really started uh, because of Oshkosh. When I was a junior in high school, I actually started building a steel tube and fabric airplane on my own, a little Pober Pixie, uh, uh, which was not a hugely popular airplane, as it turns out. It's one that the EAA was marketing, a little Volkswagen powered parasol wing tail dragger. Well, it was in the 1990s that I recovered a Citabria. So I recovered and repainted, but then it wasn't until I did the Super Cub, which started in um, really in 2017, that I really got into what I'd consider true aircraft restoration, where I went all the way to the bottom of the airplane and uh, started working the way back up. And uh, it was just an amazing experience. It was probably a, a much better experience for me because I was older and wiser and had learned a lot uh, in life that I could apply to the, the rather uh, difficult task, actually, of restoring an airplane. It's not an easy thing to do. Yeah, it's a pretty big undertaking, that's for sure. And it takes yeah. uh, it takes a lot of drive, for sure. So I want to bring up some pictures here of the Super Cub. And if you could, I guess, share part of some of the best you know, tips or uh, suggestions that you would have for anyone that might be considering or even currently uh, in the middle of a process or just started a process? Yeah, well, the, the first thing that I thought of, uh, that these are relatively broad ideas. Um, and uh, the first one is simply your qualifications to do such a thing. And, and I don't necessarily mean the, the pure legal qualifications, but um, one of the things that uh, even a restoration project is a, a mountain to climb. And of course, a home built airplane, one that you're building from scratch, uh, maybe a little less so from a kit, but especially from scratch. It is just such a steep hill to climb uh, emotionally. There's many other aspects too that, that factor into that, but just the emotional element of being able to get through a project. Um, and so it's important to kind of, to the best of your ability to determine if you're really qualified to, to dive into something that honestly is going to be and significantly more expensive than you understand. The other thing was, um, and this kind of brings up a little bit more of something that's really important to consider when you're going into a project is what kind of place do you have to work on it? And mm -hmm. I didn't have a very good place, actually. I was moving it up into a loft area. So you can see there's an I-beam just above the uh, 
in front of the windshield. Um, yeah, I see that. Into a small 20 by 25 foot space that I had to do the restoration, at least the bulk of the restoration of this airplane. It's essentially like a two car garage. And that is big enough. Um, and we'll see a picture later that shows the fuselage and both wings um, covered in that space all at one time. A proper space to work in is a big issue. And for some people, that's an easy thing to um, acquire. And yeah. for others, it's a very difficult thing to come up with. So it's an important consideration to. That's you know, true. I could see where that could definitely be one that uh, someone might just overlook. They find the project and they have a plan and um, they don't realize, you know, what they really need because maybe mm -hmm. they haven't been around it and they just kind of think, right. they'll figure it out, you know, so. Sure. Going back real quick on the qualifications there is that if it's a certified airplane, then in theory, it needs to be, you know, an AMP mechanic that's doing the work, or at least you need to have an IA that's going to be signing off the work and is going to be watching over and making sure that everything is done properly. If you lose that relationship with someone who's essentially, you know, taking the responsibility for the airworthiness of it, uh, you could be in limbo. So that's, that's a really important consideration. Airplanes are a lot different than many other things that people may have worked on, being more fragile. And every act that you do is more critical to safety and keeping people alive. This shows some of the going back together part of the airplane. Because I was actually doing the airplane for a, a half brother I have out in California. And he was paying me then to work full time on it. That's another thing that drastically changed this project. Um, it was much easier in this instance for me because it was my full time job. The downside is I don't get to keep the airplane though at the end of the project. So yeah. <laughs> that was, and that's a pretty big downside. But anyway, this uh, that picture I I love that picture because those uh, those uh, Cub Master cylinders uh, for the brakes were. They had been painted black and they were just just grody looking, dirty and messed up. And uh, I cleaned them up and just left them natural like that. And I think it made them beautiful. I made all new floorboards and of course all steel <clears throat> components were sandblasted and primed and painted. And, and I really liked the opportunity to create um, essentially better than new um, details. Yeah, one thing I've noticed myself is I'm, I'm a detail guy, so notice detail, and that's sure. one thing I've noticed right away, even from looking at the exterior picture, just kind of hone in on, you know, fine lines and hubcaps yeah. and stuff like that. And uh, uh -huh. you definitely can see the detail here in the, the floorboards and the placard there on the floor. Uh -huh. I was pretty impressed from what I've seen. So you did an outstanding job when it comes to detail. Thank you very much. I was fortunate that the airplane won a, a bronze Lindy. There it is there at Oshkosh. And, um, and then this was, I'll add, this is just an interesting thing. So this picture was taken on Saturday, the day the awards were given. And so the Sunday morning we did this photo shoot, but my uh, brother is with me in the airplane there. You can't really see him too well. And we were loaded up and ready to go full of fuel. We did the photo shoot and then turned Southwest and headed for California with the airplane. Oh, wow. So it was, uh, <laughs> It was a heck of an adventure to uh, do that formation flying and then start the journey that was uh, four and a half days uh, all the way <laughs> to the West Coast. But fortunately, it performed without any problems uh, all the way to California. So That's awesome. It's yeah. really awesome. I want to scan back through some of these other pictures sure. here. But uh, just so others know, if you're interested in seeing more of the pictures here in longer detail or if you'd like to see the ones I didn't put up, I will put a link in the description in this video. You can see a roughly five minute video that actually has all the photos I was provided. So if you're interested, make sure you check that out below. A sure. couple more tips for us. Well, one of the things that I think that's really important to understand, and I was fairly um, aware of the idea that the budget for the project is likely to go overboard and tried to prepare for that in advance, but still a yeah, budget always goes overboard and usually pretty significantly. It's would be a really rare project that would come in mm -hmm. at expectations. Part of it is because typically we're optimistic about, you know, how much it's going to cost. And then secondarily, you, you usually don't know all the, the hurdles that you're going to run into, you know, doing a restoration, especially you may dig a little deeper and it's like, wow, there's a big surprise. You know, there's a, there's a $1,500 surprise right there. Maybe so it's real easy that once you get into it, you think, well, maybe I'll go ahead and do this thing too. You know, even these old relatively affordable airplanes, it can still add up pretty darn fast. So that's another thing that's really 
important to be prepared for. The budget is likely to get a little bit out of control and that's normal. That's completely normal. Um, yeah. But it's also difficult to deal with, especially if you're tight on finances. So. Yeah. So give yourself margin, but prepare yourself for um, in the event that you go over your uh, your margin that you've provided. Yeah. That. Some some path to be able to be able to keep the project going because that's a terribly disheartening thing when you find out. Well, I need another five thousand dollars, but I don't have it. You know. So mm -hmm. then the airplane sits. Uh, and the, another thing that kind of fits right in with that would be the time schedule, uh, just being okay. able to understand how long a project is realistically going to take. Really hope that I could go like a madman and get this done in six months. Okay. And it took 13 months to get through it. Now, admittedly, we did expand the alterations to the airplane pretty significantly from what the original idea was. So anyway, um, the time and the money um, just never seem to match what we can imagine it would take. And so that's just a good thing to be prepared for in the sense that if you're at least emotionally prepared for it, then it won't be a shocker to you and it won't take the wind out of your sails simply because it's happening. You'll just have to realize, well, I got to deal with it. I've either mm -hmm. got to come up with more money or it's going to take longer or both. And you push on through, hopefully. Yeah. To mentally prepare yourself. Like you said, you know, you could can be hard on you when you run into something and you do have to slow down prepared for an event if that would happen. Another thing, this one actually is a, a really good one uh, for just the actual process. And that is to document the process of taking the airplane apart with photographs. Like, for example, on this one, I was certainly familiar with Super Cubs, but I'd never actually worked on a Super Cub. Well, I appreciate those five things. I think those are all very valuable and uh, definitely something to consider. And hopefully that can help some of the viewers watching this. And if you have any other questions, um, you can drop them below. We'll definitely look at those. Either myself or Mark can answer those. Feel free to do that. Uh, but one thing I want to jump into next is back note, you know, how I actually came across Mark Plain and uh, I guess his new business venture. Um, so Mark and I, we just recently met here over on Facebook. I actually noticed one of his pretty awesome looking cub hats. So um, I reached out, made a comment and found out he actually lives about 45 minutes or so just south of my hangar home here. I later learned that he had done the Super Cub restoration. Again, I'm a detail guy, so I immediately started asking more about it. And really his Cub hats also have that detail that kind of stands out, um, outstanding workmanship. If you would, Mark, tell us a little bit about your new business venture. Yeah, well, I've been trying to find a way. I am. I actually work uh, every day as a ceramic tile installer and I do a lot of custom showers. So that also has developed my attention to detail skills. Um, I've been doing that for about 20 years. And, and honestly, that helped a bunch when it came to doing the work on the Super Cub because of, again, that attention to detail. And that's something that, you know, oftentimes if you don't, if you're not wired that way, and some people certainly are, but you can learn to be that way, but you do it through experience. So anyway, I definitely encourage people because I think the attacking an airplane a project, whether it's a home build or a restoration, attention to detail is the way to go, in my opinion. So anyway, uh, I have not been able to afford to have an airplane of my own. So I wanted to start a, a business on the side uh, so I could generate some extra money. And it's a little hard to understand how I got there. I'm not exactly even sure. But so I came up with this idea of I really want to do an, an adventure apparel company but I don't have the money to do that at this point for starting. So I came up with the idea of doing the hats with a leather patch on them. And so I've got one of the, the leather patches right here um, that uh, shows, in fact, I thought it might be kind of interesting to see. I, I start with uh, raw veg tan leather. So I literally make the patch from essentially a scratch piece of uh, leather. And uh, it's, uh, basically branded with the uh, the Cub graphic, which I made the graphic too, to just try to encapsulate the, the, the great look of the lightning bolt. Um, and then I sew these patches onto the hats, like this particular one here that I'm wearing. And uh, so I do have the website. In fact, I got, uh, I have cool packaging tape that I put on the uh, packages. And so there's the web address right there. It's cruxwear.com. I've got some cool cub and super cub because I also have a stole hat. Uh, I have just two products right now, but this one then is for short takeoff or landing. So this is to try to reach the, uh, the super cub, especially the Alaska guys. But I'm trying to expand the line. In fact, I'm, uh, I soon I'll have an experimental 
patch to put on the hats. So I'm going to try to really speak to the guys who are building airplanes. And then I've got some generic pilot oriented ones. A lot of potential for this. So the long term goal is to even expand beyond aviation stuff. But aviation will always be a part of it because it's the biggest part of my life. I'm trying to create a, a really great product that you can feel good about and uh, enjoy. Response has been quite good here at the outset. I'm really excited that it's going to maybe take off here, no pun intended. Yeah. And, and then hopefully it's going to put me in the seat of a, an inexpensive airplane here before too long so I can stop just talking about aviation and do a little more aviating myself. Sounds awesome. Really looking forward to uh, seeing this take off even more. I'm kind of eyeing this one right here. I'm going to have to maybe drive down and uh, just do a, a check out in person maybe. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah it's pretty cool that you're so close. I, I was really surprised too when I saw your videos on Facebook and, and and it took me a little while to then realize, oh, wait a minute, you're like right next door almost here. So I think there's going to be a huge line eventually of aviation oriented patches. Just I'm starting out small because I don't have a lot of cash. There's going to be a lot of really uh, interesting aviation patch hats here in the future. So yeah, small steps, dream big. Sounds there good. you go. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate it, Mark, uh, for your time and your expertise and your experience that you've done with the uh, Super Cub and really glad that you uh, had a great successful um, restoration. You got an award and uh, had the photo shoot and um, sound like a really great project and you were able yeah. to work on it full time, which a lot of people don't have the opportunity. Yeah, that's um, for sure. So, so that's, that's really cool that uh, you were able to do that. So. Yeah, it was. It was an amazing blessing. I was very, very fortunate um, and fortunate that it turned out uh, looking as well as it did and being solidly airworthy. The airplane's got uh, between 150 and 200 hours on it now since the restoration. In fact, my, my brother just got his private license. He wasn't even a oh, pilot really? when I started working on the airplane for him. So okay. he did his training in the airplane and now he's actually got his private license literally just a few weeks ago. Uh, wow. So it's a great success story all the way around. Yeah, that's so. awesome. Really cool. So until next time, just want to thank you for your time and be safe and be blessed. And I will see you in the next one later.